Et puis, vous savez, il me semble que seulement hier, c'était le jour avant mon show. I don't know what all this whiny bullshit is about, but let's get this straight before I leave you tonight. Of course we should raid Iraq. You know, these candy asses are always saying, let's wait. We need proof that Sodom has weapons of mass destruction. Well, if we wait long enough, trust me, he's going to send us the proof, okay? <laughs> and who the hell is Europe to tell us anything about anything? Just shut up and make our porn. <laughs> yeah. Now, France doesn't want us to invade Iraq. Hey, relax, Kermit. We don't even want to use your airspace until you hang a fucking Airwick pine tree on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Excuse me, Airwick. <laughs> And China has now cautioned us against invading Iraq. I guess the only reason China would go into Iraq is if a college student stood on the border proffering a daisy to a gun turret. <laughs> now, they're fighting words. Just shut up, China, and make our other porn. <laughs> you know, On, on the home front, support for an invasion is waning in the polls. I guess some people must think it's morally wrong to attack another country if gas is still less than two bucks a gallon. <laughs> Let's not beat around the Neville Chamberlain Bush here and make the same mistake we did in the late 30s. Put a missile into Hussein's bunker sometime in the next month or two. Look, it worked wonders on Gaddafi. He hasn't given us any shit since we pumped the fat boy into his pup tent way back when. <laughs> He's always got that stunned look on his face. Gaddafi's always got that stunned look on his face. He looks like Stuart Margolin after the Rockford Files was canceled. <laughs> hey, folks, Saddam Hussein is just Hitler with two balls. And the fact is, if we don't croak this jag off soon, that's two more than we have, okay? Now, let's see what's new in the world this week. Former Secretary of State Jim Baker warned President Bush not to go it alone in attacking Saddam Hussein. Bush said not to worry. He was going to use our military as well. <laughs> No. I was going to wear a special outfit for my last show, but Serena Williams stole it. <laughs> And it was announced this week that killer chlorine gas has begun leaking north of Prague, Czechoslovakia. Hey, is that killer isn't deadly or killer isn't awesome? <laughs> Sony announced this week that it would stop production on its Betamax videotape recorder. <laughs> oh, that's great. Next thing I know, Jordash is going to quit making white satin parachute pants in my size. <laughs> A Massachusetts judge ruled that the state does not have to pay for the sex change operation of a male inmate who wants to become a woman in their prison system. Hey, since when do you have to change your gender to be treated like a woman in prison? <laughs> And although he can't hear and she's losing her memory, William and Claudia Ritchie of Lexington, Kentucky have been married 83 years, making them the world's oldest living married couple. They chalk their success up to the fact that he can't hear and she's losing her memory. <laughs> in, uh... And in sync's Justin Timberlake has set up a new foundation encouraging musical education. Okay, Justin, you first. <laughs> a couple has sued Air Canada for $5 million dollars, claiming the airline lost their tabby cat during a flight to California. The couple is defending the seemingly outrageous $5 million dollar demand on the grounds that the cat was stuffed with three pounds of uncut heroin. <laughs> And this week, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates announced he had raised his investment stake in the Six Flags theme park company to more than 10%. Gates said, considering the stock market, he thinks roller coasters are a relatively steady investment these days. <laughs> Now, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but from stock market analysis to meteorology to professional gambling, any job that involves predicting the future necessitates a certain bedrock foundation of confidence. 
that or the ability to concoct a laughably bad Jamaican accent. You know, <laughs> confidence affects every aspect of our lives because it is the looking glass through which we view ourselves. People who have high levels of confidence generally earn more money because they take on more demanding careers. They're more physically fit because they enjoy being competitive in the gym or on the athletic field. And they have more satisfying sex lives because they often do it with another person. You know, <laughs> the world's great religious figures all exuded confidence. Moses thought he could speak to God. Mohammed thought God spoke to him. Jesus thought he was the son of God. And Buddha, well, he was fat and he didn't wear a shirt. Now that takes confidence. <laughs> You know, I'm always amazed at these guys who weigh like 600 pounds but feel no compunction about ripping their shirt off to fast dance at the company picnic. <laughs> now, to me, that is the supreme confidence. Either that or an extremely calculated gesture to ensure they'd end up being the only ones who'd still have an appetite left over for the potato salad. <laughs> or make that the German potato salad. That's always been the genius of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on the dating scene, a guy's confidence can be the key to his attractiveness. And real confidence means not being afraid to show your flaws, vulnerabilities, or imperfections. Before I'd even let my dates into my car, I'd flash them a confident smile and say, hey, baby, I hope you're ready for a long night of painfully narcissistic introspection, punctu <laughs> punctuated by physical unwieldiness, building up to a big, impotent crescendo, <laughs> followed by me weeping in a locked bathroom. You know, someone once told me if you're nervous about going to parties, you should bring a prop. So I started bringing a chinchilla. Chinchillas are great because they tend to have sharp claws and they shit everywhere. They're also a good source of exotic and occasionally incurable diseases. Well, it worked like a charm, even you don't come up to me at parties anymore. And, and Dobie, the aforementioned chinch, is interred in a Tom McCann side box in my side yard. All right. What about my German side yard? You know, I... Uh, I have to admit, I'm reluctant to disrobe in a crowded locker room, but I strongly believe that the key to gaining self-confidence is by confronting your fears. So last week, I went to the YMCA near my house, walked straight into the locker room, removed all my clothing, strapped a belt of large, colorful peacock feathers to my ass, and proceeded to strut from aisle to aisle, repeatedly cooing, check it out, motherfuckers. <laughs> now, I don't think I really gained much confidence, but the management did give me my annual membership feedback. <laughs> Truly, growing up, I suffered from a crippling lack of self-confidence, mainly because I was raised by wolves who made no secret of the fact that they wanted a girl. But uh, <laughs> as an adult, I like to think of myself as confident because I am comfortable letting things go, delegating my power to those I trust, and generally relinquishing the need to control everything in my life. And also, I think confident is a much nicer word than lazy. You know, <laughs> experts recommend building your confidence by finding some small, fun task you're good at and making it your hobby. In my case, it's tearing down the self-esteem of those around me in barely perceptible manner. <laughs> that way, I can increase my relative self-confidence twice as fast. <laughs> the truth is, genuine confidence can't be acquired through external things like hair plugs and boob jobs. True confidence must come from inside, like that gastric band that keeps you from overeating. <laughs> Seriously, here's how you get confident. If you want something, you take it. Don't wait around for someone to hand it to your Jimmy Stewart around like you don't deserve it. You want that last mint Milano? You take it and fuck everybody else. How's about that corner office? Demand it, even if it means picking up your boss by his scrawny little pencil neck and shaking him until his dentures fall out. Got a hankering for that new beautiful black Mercedes? Then buy one. You've earned it. And if you can't afford it, steal one. Then when you get thrown into the pokey, don't passively accept the position as the bitch of some fifth-tier toad punk just because he's your cellmate and you're the new fish. Put on the ugly. Fashion a makeshift shank out of a mess hall spoon and start taking out the body of your rivals until you catch the pink bone from the top dog in the yard. After all, you're worth it, aren't you? <laughs> you know, folks, the...
The bottom line is this. Like it or not, we live in a universe that rewards power, and power flows from confidence. The winners of history are those who sound their barbaric yops over the rooftops of the world, while the losers are the ones who cannot express themselves without apology. And the one sure way to make your life a series of defeats, miseries, and firings is to constantly back away from even your most passionately held beliefs. Of course, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. <laughs> I want to know what you think of that. Uh... I want to know what you think, America. Give me a call, 1-800-522-8673. Whether he's making the rounds at Hollywood hot spots or making the scene in cool cat films like Swingers, a Maid, and Clay Pigeons, my guest tonight has made a career out of exuding confidence, like I have pretending I have any. Please welcome Vince Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen, Vince. You can't sing and dance, it's hard to be in that. Vincey, good to see you. Good to man. see you, man. I want to say congratulations. See you on a great run, man. Thank you, as baby. a fan Beautiful of yours. Beautiful of you. That's truthful. And, and as a fan of yours, I've enjoyed you. And, and uh, uh, you know, I think uh, I've always enjoyed references and stuff and, and, and the things that you've done. And it's funny, it's like when you're in high school, you sort of pick on kids that are smarter than you and stuff, because I know I did that because I didn't know anything, you know? So you sort of make fun of the kids that did know stuff. And it's like, I think it's strange that, like, you always reference things and bring things up and stuff. And then people make it like that's a bad thing to do. They have, like, a, a, a good knowledge about stuff and, and, and things like that. So, anyway, for me, I've enjoyed you, and I hope you don't stay uh, away too long, pal. All right, let's see. Now, what, uh, thank you. You say hmm? You like the way Miller does it? He's like, let's get off the sappy shit. It's the last show. Let's ah, get to the Vincy. stuff. And now, I like that. Listen, you yeah. always exude confidence, and I'm wondering, were you raised that way? What, what, what did your parents, did you they know, really Dennis, believe in I'm, you? I'm flattered you asked that. No, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I don't know. I always think it comes more from, from being nervous about failing than it does from confidence. I mean, I think being cocky or putting something on is different than confidence. And you really only get confident in something from, from doing it a lot, and that means failing a lot and not doing well at it uh, and loving it enough or caring about it enough to keep, you know, trying at it. So... I think, you know, for me, always motivated more from fear, I think, than, than uh, uh, and hating that feeling. So you would work harder at something so you didn't feel that yeah, way. Yeah, I've always been scared shitless, too. You're one, one step ahead of the posse is yeah. the way I look at it. Yeah. What, um, as, your, as your confident manner, and God, you're going to be marked for life by, you know, the first time people were aware of you, it was mm -hmm. that brilliant portrayal on Swingers, and I'm, you're going to be thought of as that guy in many ways your whole career. And actually, I happen to think that's a good thing. I think you'll do great work in addition to that. But right. that basic bedrock implant is always going to be in people's head. Now, do you suffer that in the public? Do people come up to you all the time? When you and Buscemi are in that bar, is that some guy coming up thinking no. he's just, you're that guy? No, well, that wasn't that. I mean, you do have that to some degree uh, as far as the, the perception as the guy from Swingers. But, but that perception is more like, you know, you have people come up and sort of, you know, want to buy you a shot, which is nice, but you can't do 20 shots a night, you know what I mean? And so, like, when you're like, yeah, okay, I'll do the shot, great, great times, high five, fantastic. And then what happens is, like, you can't do any more shots, so you're like, you know, man, thank you for the shot, and then you're like, what, are you too good to drink with me, guy? Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, not too good to drink with you, man, just not in the mood for my ninth shot tonight, do you know what I mean? So you can have that happen to you, sure, but I've always been lucky for the most part that people have always been, you know, uh, very complimentary and very nice to me and stuff, but... But you do sometimes, you know, I think probably more people on television, I think, get more of a perception of themselves. You always hear, like, people on soap operas and stuff. Like, you know, uh, I think Lucci or whatever play bad, bad characters, and people would come up and be like, you bitch, I can't stand the way you treat him, and, you know. People said this to Lucy? I, I, no, Lucci. Susan oh, Lucci. Lucci. <laughs> the only ones that said that, you know. But Jesus yeah. Christ, I always thought she was adorable. I did, too. I love, I love Lucy. <laughs> I love Lucy. <laughs> I'm so confident, I don't care how the interview's going right now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you can't teach that. You can't learn that. I'll go on a rant. <laughs> That's why I wanted you on the last show, because I remember the first time you were on, you pissed on me a little. And I, I did not. That. I knew coming Just in, I was like, you know, it's cool. the last show, so I better kiss his ass nah, up front. Because yeah, he's going he's gonna to come after me. And now I don't give a shit. I want to find out. <laughs> Last show, last show, whatever, man. You got something on your mind? You know what I mean? You're confidently upset at me? I, I don't know. <laughs>
But why is the theme even confidence? You know what I mean? I feel like I feel Miller's going to spin this to like uh, some some uh, like a children's tape too. Being confident, you're being confident. The good lesson. You're going to send everyone off with a good fucking lesson. Why are you going to send them off with a good lesson? Do you know what I mean? And that, I think we should we should talk about table manners and where they came from and like get a whole set going. You know, you know where people usually used to shake hands. They would do it like this to show they were unarmed. You know what I mean? Right. Now it's evolved into a whole other thing that we don't have time to do. Being yeah, the last yeah. show on. <laughs> Now, those dinosaurs weren't there. You were in front of a blue screen, right? I was confident that I could portray the fact that they were there, Dennis. <laughs> and you can't learn that somewhere, man. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be by the watering hole shaking. I'm going to be one of the guys that you said that, like, buys the black Mercedes and, you know, does the things in prison. I'm not sure, you know? <laughs> All right, now, uh, you seem smooth to me with the opposite sex. You go up to a woman. What if she's more confident than you? You dig that, or do you I flee from that? I try to make her feel bad about herself. <laughs> Break it down works. like Lou Gossett Jr. Like, and an officer and a chick. Until they cry, I got nowhere else to go. I don't even ask him to go home. <laughs> They're like a little deer. I like, yeah, like a little deer, <laughs> like swingers. They never leave me. I'll go on and do great work, but that one's gonna stick What's around. What's wrong with loving swingers, man? I watched I that swingers. with Jeff Bridges. I, I remember, remember on this show. Him thinking, who the f I said to Jeff, who the fuck is this kid? He's oh, I'm incredible. Proud of man. I'm proud of swingers. I'm proud of swingers. It's a fun movie, and and, and, uh, and working with Favreau and Maid and, and everything. I'm proud of. I'm proud of it, but. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I like to make girls feel real bad about themselves, you know? And if, if they have a bad relationship with their dad, that's great. You know? <laughs> that always helps, you know? And, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. What are you working on now, Big Kahuna? Are you still with my brother, Jimmy? I am with Jimmy. Beautiful. Jimmy's a great man. How's he working out for it? He's great. Jimmy's the best. Yeah, he's good people, George. right? He's great people. Tells great you people. The, he tells the truth, doesn't he, for the most part? My little brother's his manager. Yeah, he does. He definitely does. so weird does. to watch your brother become funny. a player. It's funny talking to, to Jimmy on the phone because they sound alike. Yeah. You guys sound alike. I'm sure you hear but that. But he sounds bald on the phone. See, <laughs> he is bald, but on the phone, he's so fucking confident, I feel like the guy's got, like, hair down to here. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Honest to God. Honest to God. I was like, this guy's got to have a gorgeous head of hair. Yeah, it was then the you confidence. Meet him. It was with the confidence. And when I met him, I was like, wow. <laughs> That's just confidence. You know you what? You can't learn that anywhere. Oh, God. It grows into his brain, his hair. Yeah. He's got a full head of hair. Yeah. It's inside the head. Yeah. <laughs> And now, it, what part are you playing here, man? I, I'm a, what, what part with the hair am I playing? Yeah, what are you doing here with this the was Vanacek, a summer cut. George this is, Papard cut? What was the thing you said when I came out that you thought I was going to be what? In Rent? You or? and Richard uh, Gere were doing Bent. That's no, right. don't you remember that play? <laughs> But I did, I did a movie that comes out in January called Old School with Will Ferrell, who's also a client of Jimmy's, and Luke Wilson. It's a comedy for DreamWorks. Will Ferrell's very funny. And then... Uh, Ferrell, was he, is he scared shitless about leaving the show? You know, I think he was excited. I think he felt like he was there for a long time. Well, you know better yeah, than anybody. Yeah, he's got great chops. Yeah, he's got great chops, and I think me. he did everything he could. And, you know, as a fan, I'm excited to see him do movies. He's great in this movie. You know? yeah, what what is it, a comedy? It's comedy, yeah. Beautiful. Start off that way. <laughs> you never know how it turns out. Uh, we got a phone call for you. Line three, we've got Brian from Atlantic Beach, New York. Brian? Hey. Brian, hey, you got to talk quicker than that. You're, you you got to show some confidence. That's the thing. <laughs> If that's a great point, and I want to know one thing. I want to know what you guys think. I mean, this trust is, is the basis of confidence, right? Now, how come on the show... The Listen, you just can't say, say it like with a grunt in your might, voice and think you it means something. You might want to be calling into a different show that helps with problems, Brian. You know, I mean, this is... I don't know if, I, I don't know if we can tackle those issues tonight. But I'm proud of you, and I'm proud that you called. <laughs> All right, line four, we got Victor from Manhattan Beach. Vic? Hey, Dennis, uh, we're going to miss you, man. All hey, right. if it helps, I don't know who the fuck you are, man. All right, uh, <laughs> let's screw that. Do you think baseball players lost confidence in themselves and or the fans when they didn't go on strike? I'm just glad they didn't. I really don't give a shit anymore. Really? Man. I wanted them to go on strike. Really? Didn't you? Yeah, I wanted them face down in the gutter because they, they're fucking the game up, man. Well, I think it's a bigger problem just the players, though. I mean, I think the whole thing's way out of control. And it's like now you're trying to solve it, but the problems are... We're going to have this problem again in a Four couple years. years. It's impossible. And it's going to be it's uglier gonna then. It's going to continue. So I'm just happy that the game's going on for now. Well, I, I like I said, I think a drunk's got to be face down in the gutter, and I think baseball's a Reeling, stumbling around. It's on. What's your favorite to follow, sports-wise? Um, I like the curling. Do you? <laughs> do you curl your own? Do you curl yourself? No, but uh, that might be my next show. I'm going to pitch celebrity <laughs> Not curling. Not a show, but you could. You could. That's something you could get in shape uh, for and really make a run I for. I know they get I that mean, broom out there. You could stop talking to people. 
You can stop talking to people and really get really get into it and like compete and like find out a new whole new confidence, self confidence. Oh, bro. I knew you were gonna beat the shit out of me with well, that topic. Confidence, confidence, I needed something to hang it on for Christ's sake. Confidence, say. confidence. I don't ah, know. Fuck confidence. Yeah, that's it. That was good. I don't have any confidence right now. With the arms folded, you're saying something different than I'm what your body's saying. I'm saying hold me. I'm saying hold me. That's what you're I'm saying. Nine but years your I've had a place else. here. They kicked me out onto the street. I'm scared, Vince. You're not hold scared. Me. You're not scared. I'll hold you. Anyway. Come on. You asked me to hold oh, you. I was. You asked me to hold you. Yeah. That got weird. I was scared. Uh, I wanted you to hold me. Right. I was scared I'd get a boner. I wanted right. you to stop holding me. Don't be scared. Don't uh, be scared. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vinny. Well, you, I appreciate you coming hey, I appreciate on, man. It's good huh? to be here. My last guest. Good to be here. Well, I'm flattered to be here. Yeah? Last guest. Well, it's good to be you're here. You're a good man. man. Vince Vaughn, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Strange but true fact George W. Bush is also the president of Mexico. With all due respect, Mr. President, after driving all the way out here, this better be the biggest fucking jackrabbit I've ever seen. <laughs> Perhaps President Bush's endorsement of California gubernatorial candidate Bill Simon would have gone better had they not been standing with their backs to a speeding locomotive. <laughs> no, I never fought in a war myself, but I ran a company that sold a lot of weapons to people who did. Sure, the Azeel brothers would rip you off on resealing your driveway, but they were so colorful you didn't mind. <laughs> Democratic candidate for the governor of Ohio, Tim Hagan, can't believe how much his wife's cousin looks like William Shatner. <laughs> Officer Dirk would pull you over in a second if he felt you were disrespecting the lady he called justice. No one knew how to react when, while lining up for the 100-mile race, Big Stewie's bike seat, bike seat suddenly unscrewed itself, hopped down, and ran off shrieking into the woods. <laughs> Sergeant Reynolds began to rethink his heterosexuality when this was the only heat mirage his mind kept summoning up. <laughs> Donald finally found a way to combine his twin loves of torture and the price is right. Hi, Dennis. I'm a huge fan. Can you sign my inner ear? <laughs> Slappy barked a secret signal to his handlers whenever he encountered a chick he wanted to be brought back to his trailer. <laughs> Stu and his wife, Peg, were nudist for one reason. They didn't look good in clothes either. <laughs> and now the purple marlin. Everyone else at the job site knew to avoid the portage on after Dempsey ran out of it and dove under the wheels of a moving truck. <laughs> Mika always won the pig toss competition because he didn't give a shit about the pigs. <laughs> when the door opened, all Darlene knew was that she was about to sell one hell of a lot of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> And finally, comedian Dennis Miller this week thanked HBO for their kindness and commitment, his writers, staff, and crew for their friendship and excellence, and his viewers for watching as he ended a nine-year run of his cable comedy show. It has been fun. Good night. Bye-bye.